On today's episode of Locked On Canucks, we preview the biggest game of the season so far, take a look at some betting odds, and how did you become a Canucks fan? Stick around. You're not going to want to miss this episode. You're Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Canucks, the podcast to keep you locked in on all things Vancouver Canucks. I am, am of course, your host, Justin Pooney. Please follow me at underscore process sports please follow our show and you know the drill already at locked on canucks as you see on the bottom of your screen right there guys another day another massive massive game for the vancouver canucks but before we get into that i want to thank you for making locked on canucks your first listen of the day we are available wherever you get your podcast services, and also, we're free. Canucks take on the Arizona Coyotes tonight from Rogers Arena, looking to make it five in a row against a team that's lost four in a row and a team the Canucks just beat 5-1 in Arizona. Thatcher Demko, as expected, should be the starting goalie. And for all you betters out there, the Canucks right now are minus 1.5 on the spread and minus 270 on the money line over under is at six. Canucks, of course, are coming off a 5-4 overtime win that I guessed correctly, not the score, but the outcome and the goal scores correctly against the Vegas Golden Knights. And now, thanks to a LA Kings beatdown throwdown from the Colorado Avalanche last night, 9-3, the window and the hope is still alive for the Vancouver Canucks to capture the playoff hearts and imaginations of all Canucks nation. Look, as things stack up right now today on the beautiful April the 14th, 2022, your Canucks are sitting at 82 points, 74 games played. They are... Still trailing the Stars by six points and the Predators by seven for the final wild card spot. But here is where things get interesting. The third and final spot in the Pacific Division, where thanks to that LA Kings loss, the Canucks are six games behind, sorry, six points behind LA, but also have two games in hand. The win tonight will put them four games, sorry, four points back with only. I think they'll have to just have seven games to play and they'll be four points back and still a game in hand. Guys, there is hope. There is a pathway. But as Tyler Myers said, you just got to take it one game at a time. And that is the only thing the Canucks can do. Take it one game at a time and take care of what is in front of you. The power play has been clicking on all cylinders, firing on all cylinders right now absolutely lethal. I think right now their power play sits at ninth in the league and it's been just on fire ever since the last month or so. Penalty killing, of course, is still an issue, but look, when you have a goalie like that, you're going to bail you out. Your goaltender is your best penalty killer. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is can you score more goals in the opposition than letting to win the game? That's all that matters right now. Can you win every game? And the way the Canucks are playing right now, if they don't win this game, they're done. But if they win this game, they live to fight another day. And that is something like I talked about yesterday. Hope and belief is so important. If these Canucks have hope and belief that they can win every game, they will win this game because they are better than the Arizona Coyotes. And they also getting got help on the scoreboard last night. Look, if they're able to squeak in to this third playoff spot, which I think is extremely doable because LA is a young team and they're a surprising team. 
I don't think very many people predicted the LA Kings to be in the third playoff spot of the Pacific Division. Anaheim had a great start, and then they tailed off like no tomorrow. I think LA can do that because they have young players. Yes, they still have the Kopitars and the Dowdies there, but they're long in the tooth, right? You have these guys. You want them to be... Look, Jonathan Quick, all these... They're there, they're experienced, but they haven't been there for a while. Their young players have never been there before. Could we be seeing some fatigue from LA? Could we be seeing them have a late season? You always see late season collapses. Why can't it be the LA Kings? Right? The LA Kings are not world beaters. There's not they're not the greatest team on the greatest show on turf to quote uh football, but the LA Kings can be got. You know, I look at their I look at their their raw their you know, power plays 28th percent, 21st in goals, 32nd shooting percentage. Their penalty kills 22nd. There's nothing out of order. The Kopitar's had his 18 goals. Kemp is, you know, the biggest goal scorer with them with 33 goals. If you look at roster stack, roster for roster, I think the Canucks roster is better than the Los Angeles Kings, especially in the high-end talent market. So I can definitely see LA losing a couple more games. And if you look at LA's upcoming schedule, right? They have a game. They're, they next play the, the Blue Jackets, which are not in the playoffs, but you know the Blue Jackets are a decent team. And at Anaheim, that LA rivalry, Blackhawks, Ducks, Kraken, Canucks. So there is ways to this that that the Kings can be got, and it's all in the Canucks' power of what they can do. So the way I see it is this: if the Canucks can sneak into that third that third playoff, uh, that third Pacific Division position. I can see them. It's Edmonton. Yes, you have Drysidle and McDavid, who have been playing a lot better ever since Dave Tippett got canned. Now, goaltending, of course, is the biggest issue with the Edmonton Oilers. Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen do not scare me one bit. Maybe I'm talking too much ahead of myself, but I don't care. I'm going to talk too much ahead of myself because if the Canucks can catch. LA and play Edmonton in the first round. I like those chances a lot better than getting to the last wild card spot and playing against an absolute juggernaut in Colorado. So, look, it's gonna it might be a long shot. I might be crazy out of my mind, but I definitely think that this game is a huge game. We all know that. I expect the Canucks big players to show up once again. I expect maybe to preview my betting segment at the end of the game. I expect a JT Miller goal tonight. I also think that the way the Canucks stack up against LA, I, I could see LA crumbling. I can see these guys on the Kings not being able to pull through, and I could see the Canucks guys pulling through. So I think the Canucks will catch LA and make the last final playoff spot in the Pacific. I might be completely wrong but I could also be right because they have two games at hand. They're six points back. LA is a young team and the Canucks have more skill. I see it. I predict it. It's going to happen. But first, they have to win tonight. Coming up after this little commercial break, we're going to talk about something a little more personable. We got all the the traffic cop stuff out of the way. Talked about tonight's game. We'll come back to tonight's game at the end. But I want to talk about your Canucks fandom and how that came to be. So stick around for that. But first, I want to talk about BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs at the start and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. I want to talk about because we only talk about the game for so much, right? It's a game against the Arizona Coyotes, the worst team in the league. We know what the playoff implications are. We know they're six points back of LA. You know, they got to chase Vegas, Nashville, Dallas. All those teams are grouped in. We know all of that. But I want to talk about fandom. 
and how you became a Canucks fan. You know, people come to this country, you know, Canada, of course, the country full of immigrants, people coming from all across the world and, you know, meeting in Vancouver, which, you know, is a very multicultural city, a very vast and diverse city. Um, and people come here. And what's one thing that bonds people together, especially in society now where things are always kind of uh, blurred? Um, there's a lot of things devising us as a society. But what's one thing that no matter what, everybody in Vancouver can uh, strike a conversation up on? That's the Vancouver Canucks. The Vancouver Canucks can are a conduit, a beacon, a whatever word you want to use a motor or not a motive, a motive or a method to bring people together story. So my grandparents are immigrants from India. They came from India. They don't know anything about ice hockey. They don't know anything. Never knew anything about ice hockey. When they come to this, came to this country, one of the biggest things for them to relate to other people was the Canucks. Everybody knows about the Canucks. And, you know, I have friends, you know, from other parts of the world might not like sports as much as i do might not care about sp as sports as i do you know you run across people that don't you know know too much about sports or care too much about hockey but what's one the one thing we can all relate on is the canucks whether they're doing good and oh wow did you know the sedines i love the sedines or i love bo horvat i think brock besser is awesome i think elias Pettersson is a superstar or how bad they are man the canucks suck um so I want to, you know, I'm going to explain my fandom about how I became a fan of the Canucks. I kind of touched on the first episode, but, um, you know, a little bit dive it deeper. So as you know, I am come from a Punjabi heritage, a Sikh heritage. And um, in India, there is no ice hockey in India. Ice hockey is not around in India because it's very, it's not the climate and the money and the funds, right? But so I came, when I was born, you know, my, my father was born here in Canada and he grew up playing, you know, street hockey and you know loved watching hockey. he was a montreal canadians guy because he grew up in the 70s when the canadians were really good um and my mom she's a big sports fan too so she her and my dad put me in hockey and i played all sports growing up but it was always um when it was a choice would you rather go want to go play out in the rain um for soccer, and as everybody in Vancouver knows, or that lives in the lower man that knows, when you play soccer in the winter time and it's cold and it's raining, and you get hit with that wet ball, it does not feel good. So maybe it was just because I hated being outside in the rain and playing soccer, or I just truly love the game. I'll take a ladder that I truly love the game. Um, so I always picked hockey, and from the young, earliest I can remember. I always remember there being Canucks games on in our house. And still to this day, whenever you come to my house on a Canucks game day, the game will be on, whether it's myself or anyone else in my household watching the Canucks play. Um, it, so, I, you know, I was grew up playing hockey, but I also fell in love with the Canucks. So seeing them on TV, seeing guys like Marcus Naslund, but my favorite player of all time, Marcus Naslund was my favorite player growing up. Um, just a wrist shot. He was the captain, the best player. Um, I remember one time uh, there was a Best Buy opened up in Surrey, and my mom waited out in the rain for him and told me to come to see him, and he didn't show up, or they cut the line off or something like that. And it was heartbreaking because I wanted to see my favorite player. Um, I remember I went to my first Canucks game when I, I must have been like five or six. We sat up at the top, and I think it was the Montreal Canadiens, I think. I'm pretty sure it's the Montreal Canadiens, yeah. And, you know, always watched all, like I said, I meant, remember, you know, them going to the playoffs. I remember it was Save on Foods when I was younger. You could go when you went there, you had like these little, they had a little medallion collection set of the Canucks. So there was like a little pamphlet you open up that you could stick little medallions every Canucks player. I think it was probably 2003. And I remember we would go, we would always get, the medallion, and I filled it all over the whole Canucks roster. And I had that for years. Years I had that for. I wrote my front, my name on I kept it in like this little box in my room as a keepsake. Um, and it was just always something that it brought not only just myself, but it brought my family together. Like all my extended family, everybody could talk about the Canucks. Any 
you know, any family gathering we would have at somebody's house, any um, event, anything, there will be a Canucks game. If the Canucks were playing, the game was on TV. Um, you know, going to games, um, you know, even growing up, uh, you know, having something to connect with my grandparents about, talking about the Canucks. You know, they didn't know much, but when they they started watching, they started to pick up the game. And, you know, these these are people that didn't know anything about ice hockey and they were able to understand the game, not understand it, but figure out the game at a basic level and able to create conversation about that. Cause it was, um, it's true. It was the Canucks are truly something more than just a sports franchise slash team, at least for me and my family, like it's a, it's a something that connects all of us. Right. Um, so I want to hear, what your stories would be about what your favorite um, Canucks, you know, how you got introduced into Canucks fandom, how you um, or your family, you know, maybe came from a different area and the Canucks allowed you to connect with the lower mainland community, allowed you to connect, connect with our community. Um, Cause like I said, like, we, like I remember 2011, of course, 2011. Um, I just remember, you know, the various playoff runs always, you know, throwing the car flags up. Me and my sisters, we were, we were young, sitting in the back of the car and just count how many Canucks flags we would see from one trip to another. You know, getting the round, the the towel power, the white towels. Um, pretty sure if you go into my kit, actually, I don't know, my mom might throw them all the way now because she hated them. But our in our kitchen, we'd have all these old towels, the Canucks towels we'd use as like just regular kitchen towels. Um, so, like I said, the Canucks to me are... It's hard. I guess how do you say it? It's like you look at like football um, with like a team like the Cleveland Browns. So ingrained into um, – now the Canucks haven't been as bad as the Browns, but so ingrained in a city for so long that just starving to win, uh, starving to see success. Um, yeah, it's, it's more – like I said – I said yesterday, we are not a hockey town. We're a Canucks town. And it just builds on that. Like, nobody cares about anything else in hockey. At least the vast majority. They don't care about the vast majority of um, what's going on in the NHL. They care about the Canucks and how it affects the Canucks. You get people calling in on these radio stations. You get people everywhere just talking with the Canucks because they want to see a winner. And that, to me, is so important. It is absolutely so vital to this team's success because people care and people come from all over walks of life to be a, a part of Canucks Nation. And you know, myself included, it, it's more than just a team. It's, you know, builds, brings people together. And that's what I love about um, Canucks on the positive side is that it brings people together and it allows people from any place in the world where it's trying to tear everybody apart. The Canucks, when they're playing well, bring people together. So that's some positivity for all of you guys today that need to hear that about simply just being positive towards the Canucks. So coming up, I'm going to give you guys some predictions on today's Canucks versus Coyotes game. The biggest game of the season for the Vancouver Canucks. Where? Oh, sorry. For now. <laughs> so stick around. Well, we've reached the end of our show today. So quickly, before I go, we're going to go through some lines on the Canucks game today. I'm going to give you guys three bets you should cash in because I've been right the last couple times so first if you didn't miss off the top of the show canucks are minus 1.5 on the puck line tonight the over under is at six and if you want to do money line the canucks are minus 280 on the money line so for all the basic ones slam the canucks money line at one and a half they'll win by at least two goals i'm thinking it'll be tighter i'm thinking probably four two canucks win empty net goal seals the deal it will stay at six, so I would take the under. And as for player-wise, player-wise, I did say take JT Miller to score because he is overdue to score. He hasn't scored in a few. I will take 
JT Miller to score an anytime goal. That right now is set at plus 110. Also, we've been seeing a lot of depth players chip in for the Vancouver Canucks. So I'm going to say a little bit off the board here. I'm going to take a Adam, sorry, a Brad Hunt goal from the point. He scored a few goals. I think he's going to score tonight. And take shots. Take Elias Patterson over on shots. I believe that line is set at two and a half right now. It's still early, but it's set at two and a half. So if you get all that in, you guys can win you guys some money. So Canucks minus 1.5. Take the under at six. Miller to score. Adam, sorry, Brad Hunt to score. And Elias Pedersen over two and a half shots. That's right there, folks. We'll win you some money, money, money. <laughs> Tomorrow's show, we will, of course, break down said Canucks first, said Coyotes. Hopefully, a Canucks win and teeing up the next biggest game of the season, barring a Canucks loss, which will be against the Dallas Stars on Monday. Canucks have a little bit of a break and they play the Stars on Monday and then the Senators on Tuesday. The Stars game will then be again the next biggest game of the season. So guys, I want to thank you for making Locked on Canucks your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, head over to the guys at Locked on Fantasy Hockey. Hosts Philip Livingstone and Steele Rodine are going to make sure you Get locked in on all things fantasy hockey and you become an expert Where on your fantasy league. Sorry. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Guys, take care. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you after hopefully another Canucks win.